Your grandfather's name was Manuel Alfaro. We were never married, so I never talked about it. About him. Ever. I needed to raise your father and work at the same time. But it was all worth it. He turned out to be the best son and best father anyone could have asked for. I know this is probably the first time I have ever talked about him to you. I know I should have done it sooner, but I was scared. I was scared you would judge me. I don't want you to look at me like other people did. Due to those looks, I wanted to prove them wrong. I had such a determination to be successful, for my kid to be successful. And for you to be successful. You have no idea how proud I am of the two of you. That was what my grandmother said when I asked about my grandfather. Years before that, it was just the two of us. My dad was in another state for work and he was going to fly back that day. However, there was a hurricane near us, so they grounded our flights. It was raining like God watched a super sad movie. And apart from raining God's tears, there was his snot too in the forms of lightning. And my grandmother, much like a COVID freak, is terrified of germs. She was terrified of lightning. I remember I was chilling in my room and she comes in freaking out. Daniela, we need to turn everything off. What? Turn what off? The electricity! We need to disconnect all the plugs. God forbid, a lightning strikes us and the power goes out and then the water comes back in and when the power goes back on, we'll be electrocuted. I know, the fridge. The food, everything will go on. I had so many jokes in my head, <laughs> but I saw her really freaked out and I went to her and said how people have security measures for this and how everything will be okay. I got to stay with her the whole night. It was weird being the parent in this situation, but I liked it. I got to take care of her and repay what I know are countless days and nights she took care of me. So whenever it rains, I imagine her running around scolding us for using electricity. <laughs> Valentine's 2020. It was something. Since I've been single my whole life, something changed in me and I said, you know what? Let's have a singles party. Let's celebrate singleness because who needs someone to tie them down? That's basically what every single person says on that day, by the way. So I invited only my singles friends. I got all doled up and threw the party downstairs in the main area of my building because I was alone with my grandma and my dad was not there. My dad is kind of a priest whenever it comes to alcohol. He has basically told me that alcohol is the opposite of holy water. The devil's water. That makes sense because whenever I drink it, it burns. So I must be doing something right, right? Watch him bring a nun to perform an exorcism on me. Get out of this body, Satan! So everything is fine. We were chilling, telling stories. And out of nowhere, someone dares me to text my crush. So you guys already know how this will turn out. So, long story short, I drank the weight of my loneliness that day. I remember after the party, my grandmother asked me how it was. I told her I was great. Went to the bathroom and sleeping. The next day, I have a hungover as big as my regret from yesterday. <laughs> I see that drunk me had the intelligence of changing into her PJs. I go to the kitchen and my grandma is looking at me like I have a horn on my forehead. How are you, sweetie? I'm great. You really should be careful on the amount of alcohol you drink. What, me? Always, I know when to stop. 
I found you sleeping on the toilet. I was mortified. I could not believe it. But it made sense. I remember going to the bathroom and sleeping. I just didn't know he was sleeping in the bathroom. I had no words. So I played it cool. I was like, oh. Yeah, I guided you back to your bed and basically dressed you in your PJs. That explains my change of clothes. Oh God, I was so embarrassed. I didn't know what to say. Thank God your dad wasn't here. He would have banned alcohol for the both of us. My love of socks is because of her. Since I was her only grandkid, she was very protective of me. If there was a breeze, she was the first one to get me a jacket. The same thing goes with socks. I saw one of the biggest sock stores of my life. So I entered and after being there for a full hour, I chose two pairs of socks. I wanted more, but I just realized how expensive funny socks are. I chose one that has a panda on the side with a t-shirt that says free hawks. And another one that has Hollywood and a director's chair and an Oscar on it. I mean, that basically describes me. I'm a panda, I sleep more than half of a day, I love hawks, and I live in Hollywood. Boom! I mean, you could say that it was destiny that I found those. My sense of style is way different than her. I love hoodies, sweatpants, messy ponytail, and funny socks. Maria Luisa would always have scarves, nice shirts, nice shoes, and not one hair out of place. I remember the day the paramedics came. She put on some clean clothes, fixed her hair, and put on perfume. When they were putting her on the stretcher, and amid all the chaos, she reminded my dad about her shoes. When she saw which pair he got, she said, Esos zapatos no, nosotros, not those pairs, the other ones. That was the last phrase I heard her say. I woke up early that day, around 6 a.m. I went to the kitchen and my dad tells me to change, that the hospital called and they were going to let me visit her. I went and changed real fast. In the Uber, my dad tells me that the doctor called and said, come here quick, this might be her last moments. I was numb. We arrived at the hospital and went where my grandmother was. I was walking behind my father and when we entered the room, I saw her lying there. And I just couldn't deal with that image at that moment. It reminded me of the time when I saw my great grandmother die in front of me. So I turned around. I heard a and when I turn around, my dad tells me to get the nurse because she was not breathing. I did, and more nurses came in. It was chaos. They were asking us questions, but my brain decided not to understand any English at the moment. The doctor came where we were and said, that my grandmother had passed away. That sound I heard was her last breath. I was numb. I didn't know what to do. I do remember embracing my dad and they led us to a quiet room to process what had happened. He was calling his family and I was sitting there. I wanted my mom there. I wanted her to tell me that everything was going to be okay and hug me until I was healed. But she wasn't. She was in Venezuela with the rest of my family. So I had to hear her say everything through the phone. Hija, I'm so sorry. Your grandmother was such an angel. She will be missed so much. How are you? That's a stupid question. I'm sorry. God damn it! I wish I was there with you. I wish you guys didn't have to go through this alone. 
No, the electricity just went out, so if I can... I felt I was in a cave without a flashlight. I didn't know where I came from, nor where the exits are. I just know I wish I had a flashlight to light the way out. I was in that cave for almost a year. I was scared. I was alone. I needed to be able to survive. I, I had to make fires with whatever I, f I could find. I would hear noises and feel things in the dark that would scare me half to death. Darkness, persuading me to just surrender to it. Telling me it would be easier to just give up. And I almost did. The moment I came to Venezuela, I saw my family, I finally saw the light out of the cave. But it was up to me to follow it. To walk when my legs were numb. When I finally got out of the cave, I turned around and saw a firefly follow me out. I know it was my grandmother. So I wasn't alone. She was always there, waiting for me, guiding me home. She has always and will always be there. <laughs> when I think about her last moments, I say that that's the perfect example of my grandmother's stubbornness. Even in her last moments, even when an angel came down and said, It's time, Maria Luisa. No, I'm not going until I see my granddaughter. And she did. She did wait for me. What a stubborn old woman. <laughs> Due to COVID and the borders being closed, my dad and I were stuck in LA for almost a year. We had my grandmother's ashes for almost a year. I didn't know if her wish was to die in another country and wait almost a year to finally rest in peace in her own country. But I know her last days were with me, spoiling me with her cooking, gossiping while drinking a beer with me. I really hope her last days were happy because they were for me. Now, whenever I'm wearing socks or God is crying, I remember those good memories. I know she's with me, keeping me safe and taking care of me whenever I am passed out on the toilet.